This study is one of many studies that your physician is likely not aware of if you're suffering from low iron levels on a vegan diet. In this video, you'll learn another factor that could be responsible for your low iron levels that has absolutely nothing to do with your nutrition. For those that are new here, hi, I'm Florian, ethical vegan for seven years and founder of fitvegans.com, the best vegan fitness coaching service in my humble opinion. Before we start this video, quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. And maybe that's a good thing, because most doctors just get three days of nutritional training in their four years of medical school. So contrary to popular belief, our doctors are often not a good source of nutritional knowledge. In fact, there's a good chance that if you're a well-informed citizen, which I think you are, you probably know more about nutrition than your doctor. However, we're talking about medical stuff here, meaning if you're pregnant, or a nine-year-old, it's probably beneficial to check things up with your doctor first. Disclaimer over, so let's just dive right in. Most of us correctly assume that the iron levels in our blood depend on the iron levels in our nutrition, as dietary iron is important in preserving our internal iron levels. Most of us vegans already know that there's a difference in absorption rates between iron from animal origin and plant origin. Iron found in animal origin usually has a bioavailability between 10 to 35%, while iron found in plants usually has a bioavailability between 1 to 20%. Yet it turns out that more iron in our body is not really better. This study here outlines that moderate to high iron levels are in fact a good predictor of early death. The higher the iron levels were in the blood, the higher the chances of all-cause mortality, meaning death of any cause. But why? Turns out that iron is long known as being a preferred nutrient for bacteria or viruses. So a natural response of our body when dealing with inflammation or an infection is to lower the iron levels in our body. Because what few people know is that most microorganisms can produce within minutes. So what constrains their reproduction is not finding a partner and, you know, pregnancy as it does in humans, but the availability of nutrients. E. coli, for example, can literally reproduce in 20 minutes under optimal conditions. This means it would take less than 7 hours to get 1 million of these f***ers. No pun intended, as bacteria reproduces asexually. But this is not all. If you give it another 9 hours, you can literally lay out the circumference of the earth with E. coli alone. So the reason we're all not walking in oceans of E. coli is because the reproduction of E. coli is limited by the availability of nutrients. And the similar thing our body does. Lower the amount of nutrients, lower the amount of infection. We see that hypothesis proven in a study of almost 20,000 patients suffering from kidney failure. The more iron you inject in the patients, the higher the chances of death are due to infection. This study here showed that HIV patients suffer from a more rapid worsening of symptoms if they do have high iron levels. Which brings me to the two key takeaways of this video. Number one, if you have very low iron levels and the levels do not get improved even with various supplementation attempts, it might be that you're suffering from an underlying issue that gets worsened by your supplementation attempts. You might be suffering from what scientists call anemia of chronic disorders, where the iron deficiency and the resulting anemia is not the cause of your illness, but more a symptom. It's worth stopping the supplementation of iron and instead take an extensive blood test if you think that this is the case. I would specifically test interleukin-1, a marker of inflammation, to see if this is in reference range. The second key takeaway of this video is a hypothesis, and that is that iron supplementation with moderate to even slightly lower iron levels is often not required without clear symptoms of anemia. So maybe the decreased absorption rate of non-heme iron in plants is actually a good thing. So if you like this video, then why not smash the like button? And if you've smashed the like button, then why not subscribe to this channel? And if you've subscribed to this channel and you're a fellow vegan looking to get in shape quickly and sustainably, then why not book a call with yours truly by clicking the link in the description below. The best case of this call is that you get awesome advice which will help you change your life and improve your life for the better. Quite cool. The worst case of this call is that you made a decision to improve your life, you stepped out of your comfort zone and you only lost about one hour. I personally love decisions where even the worst case is a quite good case. So talk to you soon and see you in the next video.